dedicate themselves, they just love to help other people. Often to the detriment of their own life. They will put, they will put their side to the, the, their life, to their dreams, their goals, they'll put it to the side in order to help someone. So it's best when they end up in a helping profession because if they're not in a helping profession, then their life can really be drained because that's really what they want to do. They will, they will constantly, they will constantly find themselves in a state of trying to help or figure out how to help a person. So if they're not in the healing profession, if they're not in the helping profession, it can torment them. Because their friends may come and, and, and have a problem, or their colleagues may have a particular... They're the people you go to when you, you know you want to have someone you can talk to. They're extremely empathetic people. They will listen to you, but not just listen in the sense of, you know, my ears are open and I hear you, I can hear what you're saying, there's words coming out of your mouth. No, they really listen. They will really get into what you're saying. They'll really be there for you, and they'll really be able to feed back exactly what you have said to them and know what your circumstances are. They have what's known as an empathetic nature. All of these different energies are born with a particular quality that makes them kind of unique. And the dynamic supportive has an empathetic nature. And what that means is that they're like emotional sponges. I mean, literally. I mean, you have to know these people. And mind you, as I'm going through these different life energies, I might be talking about one and it doesn't quite make sense. That's not your energy. It's the one when I start talking and you start thinking, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. You start feeling the sense and, and, and that, yeah, I'm like that in my life. And then the other ones, you'll be like, mm, I don't know. That's not you, that's someone else. But a dynamic supportive would know what I'm talking about that they can feel the emotions of someone literally standing next to them. They don't even have to know them. If I'm happy and I stand, and, and just try to imagine, just imagine this in, in the vision of an energy. If there's an energy around me and there's an energy around this person, I can stand next to this person. And if they're dynamic supportive, they can feel my happiness or they can feel my sadness or they can feel my anger and they will feel it as if it were their own. That's how empathetic they are. And that gives them a great quality because if they're counseling you and they know they genuinely know how you're feeling, they have these dynamic minds and they have these charismatic personalities, they can talk to you, they can counsel you, they can try to motivate, they're great motivators. They're great coaches, but not like the... That would be Paul Comden, and I have that on video. <laughs> they have this ability to know what you're going through because they can feel it themselves. And so they can counsel you on that. They can say, I know what you feel like. And like I said, they have this charisma and they have this dynamism about, uh, dynamism about them that they can come up with solutions for you, but in a very soft way. They're not pushy. They're not at all pushy. They don't want to convince you of anything. And so they, for that reason, they can make great coaches, like I was saying, but not the pushy type of coaches. The very encouraging kind of coach. Oh, you can do this. You, you know, I believe in you. And they really do believe in you. They're wonderful, amazing people to have in your life. You know, you're very fortunate if you have these people in your life. And it's, it's, very, it's very difficult to even explain a downside for them, because their downside is really, when they get on their downside, it's when they're worrying about people too much, to their own detriment. They'll make themselves sick worrying about other people all the time, and not taking care of themselves. So let's shift over to the adaptive side now. I started with the dynamic aggressive, because that's the extreme example of dynamism. These are the epitome of dynamism. On the other side of the spectrum, you have adaptives. And the extreme adaptives is the adaptive supportive. That is the majority. This is the, the, the biggest group of all of the life energies, is the adaptive supportive. And the adaptive supportive is just looking to adapt to life. And mind you, all of these different life energies, it's based on a person's where they feel good and where they feel joyful in life. And for some people who may be dynamic or creative, when they hear this description of these people who just want simplicity, routine, predictability, these people are looking like, oh, you gotta be kidding me. That would, you know, you go, oh my God, be bored. These, these are the people who want to work at a factory for 30 years and retire. These are the people who want to go nine to five, Monday to Friday, and put a tire on a car for 30 years. Uh, some of you just can't do it for 30 minutes or maybe even 30 seconds. Some of you wouldn't even show up for work. These people, <laughs> These people need that. They don't want fancy college degrees. They can, these are the type of people who can work in an environment for 20 years and never take a promotion. They can say, God, you've been here for such a long time. Why don't you become the manager? No, no, that's okay. 
no, 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 I'll just stick over here. You can give me a raise. But uh, I'm not, I want to be in charge of it. They don't want to be in charge of anything. And that's difficult for this side of the Life Energy family to understand that there's these people who are natural born followers. It's a hard concept to swallow for dynamics. Natural born leaders, natural born followers. And when you look back, huh? They complement each other. You need both. Leaders can't lead without followers. And followers by nature, I mean, people are, continue to this day to be perplexed. How did you have a Holocaust? How did you have a Stalin? Who in their right mind would follow these people? Followers. It's natural. We can, we can try to discuss it in any kind of way. We can get sociologists. Oh, yeah, the people weren't living up to their potential. Or they weren't, they were, no. These people want certainty. And that's why leaders give them certainty. That's why you hear, you know, dynamic aggressors when they're running for office, they don't ever look unsure about anything. I promise you that if you vote for me, you will have this, this, and this. Dynamics and creators are like, you liar. <laughs> that's just like, okay, just if you promise, I believe you kind of thing. So these, these, and the, but it's, it's a reality. And when you know people like this, when you know people like this and they have this energy, then it's kind of, it confirms it for me. I mean, after 10 years, I've met all kinds of people from all different life energy spectrum, and, and, and it's a real reality for me, for people who don't interact. Because if you have a particular life energy, you're going to gravitate towards other life energies. Dynamic assertives don't generally hang out with adaptive supporters. Adaptive supporters would find them too intense. Dynamic support assertives would find them too boring. Like, don't you guys do everything, anything exciting? I was like, oh, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> No, we go to work and we come home and we watch the same show and we eat the same food. These are the ones who keep a, tr a traditional society traditional. These are the ones who, when you look at a society, you're like, my God, it's a crap diet. Why are they still eating it? Well, it's our diet. It's, we grew up on it. We continue, you know, it's their life. It's their, they love their culture. They are the ones who sustain. They are the ones who adapt. They're very charitable. They're very kind. These are very soft, they're very soft energy, and they're very conscientious workers. When you explain to them how something needs to get done, they will do it. They won't be, they won't try to get creative with it, they won't try to get innovative with it. You know, if they're putting on a tire and suddenly the machine breaks, they're not gonna try to figure it out or what went wrong or put the screwdriver in. They're gonna call someone else to come fix it. So they're very conscientious about their work. So you can imagine when you need people to get something done, like in a factory, and it, you know that they, and it's, it's important that it gets done in a certain way. These are the people who you would want to do it because they're very conscientious workers. They take seriously what it is that they do, and they take pride in what they do. Right next to them are the adaptive assertives. That's the ones that they would call if something breaks. Adaptive assertives love to fix things. They're the fixers in life. They love to figure little things out. Dynamic assertives love to figure things out too, but dynamic assertives want to figure out how the universe works. <laughs> An adaptive assertive wants to figure out how does this camera work? How is it recording? And they will sit there, tinker with it, look at it, and they will figure stuff out. They are very detail oriented, they're very focused on, they are adapting to their environment. That's the difference. They're adapting to their environment in a very assertive way. The adaptive supportive seeks out instructions. How should I be? How should I live? How should I dress? You tell me, leaders. You tell me. The adaptive assertive also adapts, but they'll figure it out for themselves. They'll say, well, you know, the majority, they don't like to stand out. They don't like to be too flashy. So they'll figure it out for themselves. They'll assert themselves. They'll seek out how to do things, but still with the intent of how to adapt to the environment. For them, Fixing things is very important. Having things perfectly working is very important because if everything's working properly, you can adapt more easily to your environment. They're not one to leave a door handle broken. They'll immediately figure out how to fix it. You want to find dynamic assertives? Go to Woody's. <laughs> 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 all of the, they're, they're roaming around and they're all over the place. Either that or you go to Easton's, the DIY section, they're queued up there. Because they will do it themselves. They love to fix things, they love to tinker with things. You know, when, when I watch documentaries about the computer industry, you know, you got, you got Bill Gates, the dynamic aggressive who made it all happen, but it was all these geeky, they're the geeks. <laughs> they're the geeks and the nerds. They're the ones who are like, how, does, how can I get this to, you know, do this, that, and they'll play with stuff and then they'll figure stuff out. They're scientists. 
because they're the ones who can sit in laboratories and just tinker with things all day until they figure out how something. But they're also the engineers. They're also the perfectionistic people who make sure that something is built exactly how it should be built. And they're very feisty about it. It's got to be this way, you know? And when you're thinking about bridges and buildings being built, these people are the ones who go and say, no, it's slightly off. <laughs> Yeah, and everyone else would be like, come on, we, we want to get it done so we can go out tonight. No, no it's slightly off by 0.735 decimal points of a fraction to the left, and we need to move it, because it's a bridge. You know, five years from now, if you don't fix that, that's going to fall apart. And I'm not going to have everybody be mad at me. They'll fix things, and their houses, their homes, they tend to marry other adaptive serves, because anyone else would be like, you're too much for me, man. <laughs> Every day they're cleaning, they're dusting, or their houses are immaculate. They're, I love walking through neighborhoods, right? Because you, I can see, like I can walk into a neighborhood and there's like this, there's one lawn and it's kind of messy and there's leaves and just next to it, it's perfect. Manicured, the grass is all this high, perfectly across, and there's no leaves there. That's an adaptive assertive's yard. <laughs> you know, they're great organizers and they're the managers in an environment. So you have these adaptive supportive people and you have these, uh, uh, they're, they're leaders in their, in their local little area. They'll assert themselves in their area. If something's going wrong in the community, they'll get out and try to do something about it. You know, they're very involved. They have leadership skills, but they wouldn't become a prime minister or president. They just want to be part of their community. They don't want to stand out too much. And just, in, just next to them, we are closing in on the adaptive aggressive. The adaptive aggressive is also uh, adapting to the environment. But the adaptive aggressive, much like on the other side, you have the dynamism and then you go over to the supportive, it softens up. You have the adaptive energies and then it kind of hardens as you get towards the aggressive. Adaptive aggressives are the ultimate survivors. These are people who adapt to their environment very quickly. That's why they are adaptive and aggressive. They, they, they're driven to adapt to their environment. They're, they can multitask very well. They can blend in anywhere. Adaptive supportives and assertives will blend in gradually. They want to get to know what their people are like, what they're, you know, so they'll adapt gradually. Adaptive aggressives, they'll adapt immediately. They'll adapt to you immediately. They'll adapt to fashions. They're the trends, they're the trendy people. I always like to say, if you ever see a woman walking down Grafton Street and she looks like she just jumped off the front cover of a model magazine, that's an adaptive aggressive. They love the trends, they're very socially aware, but they're, they're great at multitasking and reading their environment. So they're great problem solvers because they always involve themselves with knowing who people are, knowing what environments are, knowing what's going on socially, and because they have this ability to multitask, they love to be in an environment where people can throw different things, look, I need to get this, 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 and this done, because they love to have small goals. They love to set tons of little small goals and go after each one because they're always driven. They always have this energy that's always on the go. They don't, you know, it's no sitting still. You gotta keep going, 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 going. And they have a sense of that their environment for them is always very temporary because they're always looking to upgrade. Like the adaptive assertive, if everything in the environment works perfectly, it's easier to adapt. For the adaptive aggressive, if they have the latest TV, the latest phone, the latest car, the upgrade means that they can survive better. They can, they can adapt to their environment better. They can, they're the ones who get to know the streets. I have an adaptive aggressive sister, and anytime she would move to a new city, she would always go out in the car and go through all the different roads because she needs to know her environment. She even told me once, anytime she even goes into a building, she has to know where the exits are. Fire exits and all these, because they really have to know their environment well. Just turn that off, I got five minutes. So the adaptive aggressives, they're also chameleons. That's the best way to sum them up. They're the ultimate survivors and they're chameleons. If, they walk into, if you walk into a room and the room is red, they'll turn red. They're chameleons. If you like Chinese food, they'll like Chinese food with you. They love to just be whatever moment that they're in. So they're very good, they become spies. They're the, the ultimate spy because they, you can, these are the people you can throw them anywhere on the planet and they'll immediately start to adapt and adjust themselves to that environment and find a way to fit in and find a way to survive. These are social climbers and they will take advantage of opportunity. They will get ahead in life because they're always looking to get ahead in life. 
Right in the middle of that, you have these creative assertives. My favorite. If you take everything that I just said about dynamics, and everything that I just said about the adaptives, and you take all of it and kind of mush it all together, that's the creative assertive. Creative assertives have qualities of all the different life energies. Creative assertives are the ones who sit in on these talks, and every time I'm going through the different life energies, they're thinking, yeah, I like that sometimes. And the next one, no, but I'm like that sometimes too. And the next one, yeah, but I'm kind of like that sometimes too. I always say that over there. I've zeroed in on one over here. You know, and by the end of it, they're like, I don't know which one I am. Which one am I? Like the one in the middle. Just grab all of them and smush it all together. These are the artists of life. These are the ones who interpret life. They know what everyone else is like. So they come out with these different characters. And it's very difficult for them in life, as she was saying earlier before she left, they're the ones that's always kind of made out to be insane because these people don't have a place in life. They're all over the place. They're sometimes up, sometimes down, sometimes here, sometimes there. Sometimes dynamic, sometimes not. Sometimes creative, sometimes not. But they have this energy that is unstable because they are unpredictable. If creativity was predictable, you have no art. Art is extremely unpredictable. You don't know what's going to come out of these people. And that's what makes them so lively and, and great, but it also makes it, there's a paradox. You know, you don't, you don't know if you really want to, because you don't know what's going to come out. You know, one minute smile, and next thing you know, they're, ah! <laughs> it's like, whoa, what happened there? I don't know, I just changed. I don't know what. But this sense of, this sense of constant changing gives them a sense that they don't really know who they are. Because the other life energies have a kind of constant with them, whereas they don't. So a lot of times they seek out externally. They seek out other people to reflect back to them. Well, how do you think I am? Or how do you think I look? Or how, what do you think about this? Because they're afraid to go inside themselves because what's going on inside themselves is constantly changing. Imagine that you have this internal sense of yourself that one day is like this and the next day is completely different. At some point, you're gonna, you, you'll start to feel like, my God, who the hell am I? One minute I'm like this, next minute I'm like that, I can't really, and they're not supposed to. And unfortunately in our society, we don't give space for creative people. You gotta find a nine to five. You have to be more organized. These people, no, these people have their own organized mess and only they understand it kind of thing. So, and the one particular quality, as I conclude now, because I'm running out of time, the one uh, important, very important quality about creative assertives of all the life energies, they are the most sensitive. They are the most sensitive. And remember that everything that I just said about all the life energies, it's part of them. So yeah, they'll be emotional. They're the middle, the hmm? middle ones. The they're the middle ones. They're, most sensitive. they're the most sensitive of all the life energies. And when I say sensitive, I mean of all the senses. They see colors differently, more intensely. They smell smells more intensely. They feel things more intensely. And that's why they become amazing painters, because they will see the hues, the different colors in the trees where I would see a tree and it's green. I, I, I once sat with a painter, woman in Rome, who was a uh, creative assertive. You know, and I, you know, I'm looking at the trees, I'm like, oh, look at this you know, beautiful green. It's like, look at the green kind of tree. She was like, yeah, it's a bit of yellow. I'm like, where? <laughs> yeah, there's some shades of orange kind of. I'm like, where? You know, have you ever looked at an amazing painting and you'll see orange, like a yellow kind of, they see that, I don't see that. But when you look at the painting, you're like, wow, that looks so real. They see things and feel things intensely. And hence, for that reason, they're constantly taking in a lot of information. And sometimes they don't know what to do with it at all, so they need some time alone in order to process that all. I'm sorry to have to really cut this short. Um, that was my challenge for today. I will be downstairs at stand 57 um, if you have any questions about it. I just want to let the other people get in for their next talk. So thank you very much for coming. <laughs>